Hello grade 10s, welcome to another lesson in this series on physical and chemical change. We have looked at physical changes, today we will investigate chemical changes. Let's cross over to Diasha to find out about a type of chemical change that has an impact on our daily lives. Burning petrol and other fuels is one of the ways human activity causes change. Burning fuels changes the fuels themselves and the energy the burning provides enables us to change many things to make our lives more comfortable. In this lesson, we will define a chemical change as a change that forms new substances and changes the chemical nature of the substances involved. And we will describe how the energy transfers in a chemical change are much larger than those involved in a physical change. Let's cross over to Diasha again to explain the energy transfers involved in chemical changes. In this lesson, we are going to take a close look at some changes involving the transfer of large quantities of energy. This is a piece of magnesium. Do you see its shiny, silvery color? Look at the magnesium as it burns. Do you see the flame? It is very bright because it is very hot. The air around the flame becomes very hot too. A large quantity of energy is transferred as light when magnesium burns. Look at all that smoke. Do you see that it is white? Look at what's left when the magnesium has finished burning. It doesn't look like magnesium now, does it? I'm sure that you'll agree that obvious signs tell us that large quantities of energy are transferred during this change. Certainly much more energy is transferred during this change than is transferred during the physical changes we talked about in lesson one. We call changes involving the transfer of large quantities of energy chemical changes. In this demonstration, when magnesium burns in oxygen, we saw that a new substance was formed. So we can define a chemical change as the formation of new substances in a chemical reaction. A chemical change also involves the transfer of large quantities of energy. Let's cross over to Diasha to find out more about chemical changes. We use the large quantities of energy transferred during chemical changes to provide the energy we need in our everyday lives and we get most of the energy we need by burning fuels. Most of the fuels we use contain compounds called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are compounds that are made up of different combinations of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. Petrol and diesel are examples of substances that contain mixtures of hydrocarbons. We burn coal to produce most of our electricity and coal contains many different hydrocarbons too. Burning is a chemical change during which a substance reacts with oxygen in the air. Candle wax is a fuel that we can burn safely to transfer energy as light. It is also a mixture of many different hydrocarbons. We are going to look at a burning candle to find out more about the large energy transfers in chemical changes. Let's cross to John in the lab to help us with this experiment. Hi there guys, have a look at what's happening here. When I light the wick of a candle, the wax at the base of the wick starts to melt. The liquid wax creeps up the wick and reacts with the oxygen in the air on the surface of the candle. Here I have a cool dry glass beaker. I'm going to lower it over the candle. Watch and see what happens. The image of the flame is becoming blurred. The inside of the beaker is fogging up. Now the flame goes out. The inside of the beaker seems to be wet now. But is this wetness water? Watch what happens to the color of the white, gray, and hydrous copper sulfate when I add a drop of oil to it. Notice that it hasn't changed color. But when I add water, look, it goes blue. Water is the only substance that will turn anhydrous copper sulfate from its grey-white colour to blue. So let's test the inside of the beaker now.
Look, the white anhydrous copper sulfate turned blue. This means that water must have formed when the candle wax reacted with the oxygen in the air. But where did the water come from? Well, we know that water is a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. We represent its molecules as H2O. The hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms in the water molecules cannot be created during burning because reactions such as this do not make atoms. The hydrogen in the water molecules must come from the hydrocarbon molecules in the candle wax. The oxygen in the water molecules must come from the oxygen in the air. What about the carbon atoms in the hydrocarbons of the candle wax? Where do they go to? They can't disappear. When the candle burns, we see only water. So any other product that forms must be invisible. It must be a gas, and this gas must contain the carbon from the hydrocarbon in the wax. Do you know a gas that contains carbon atoms in its molecules? That's right, carbon dioxide. We know that a candle won't burn in carbon dioxide. Perhaps that's why the candle flame went out earlier. Lime water turns milky when you bubble carbon dioxide through it. So let's watch as John tests the air around the candle to see if our hypothesis is true. Do you see that the lime water goes milky? This tells us that the gas carbon dioxide forms when the hydrocarbons in candle wax burn in oxygen. Burning changes candle wax into two new substances. We can show this using this word equation. Hydrocarbon in candle wax plus oxygen from the air gives water plus carbon dioxide. When candle wax burns, hydrocarbon molecules break up or decompose. Their atoms are rearranged to form completely different, simpler molecules. So, from our macroscopic observations of a chemical change, we can conclude that a chemical change that happens when any hydrocarbon fuel burns forms new substances, water and carbon dioxide, and involves the transfer of a large quantity of energy, a flame. This chemical change is very different from the physical changes we learned about in Lesson 1. During physical changes, molecules stay the same, only their positions relative to each other change. In other words, they either move closer together or they move further apart. When fuels, such as candle wax, burn, they produce new substances and give off heat energy. Let's cross over to Diyasha to find out how we use the energy transfers during chemical change. This is why we burn fuels. We burn them to get that extra energy to heat our homes, to give us light, to cook our food, to move our cars, buses, aeroplanes and so on. Our bodies burn fuels too, although fortunately without a flame. Intramolecular forces or chemical bonds are usually much stronger than intermolecular forces holding different molecules together. This is why chemical changes involve the transfer of much more energy than physical changes. Let's investigate a few more chemical changes. Here is a small amount of sulfur powder and iron filings. Watch what happens when they are mixed together. Does a chemical change take place? Well, one of the properties of iron is that it is magnetic and can be attracted to a magnet. If I pass this magnet over the mixture, the iron can be separated quite easily from the mixture. Sulfur is non-magnetic and remains behind. Now what do you think will happen if this mixture of iron and sulfur is heated? Let's cross over to the lab to find out. Here is a sample of sulfur powder and iron filings. We mix them together and place the mixture in a test tube. We heat this mixture over a Bunsen burner. Observe what happens. Note that the mixture glows with a bright red colour. As you can see, a new substance has formed. The product, iron sulphide, is a dark colour and does not share any of the properties of the original reactants. It is an entirely new substance. In this chemical change, the atoms of sulphur and iron rearrange. Let's look at what happens microscopically. This is what a molecule of sulfur powder looks like. There are eight sulfur atoms in a molecule of sulfur. This is what the iron looks like. 
Remember that in metals, the atoms are packed closely together and form a metal lattice of positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons. During the reaction, the sulfur atoms gain electrons from the iron atoms and form an ionic compound. The atoms arrange in a lattice and the ions are held together by a strong electrostatic force. We can represent this change by writing a word equation. Solid sulfur powder plus solid iron forms solid iron sulfide. To end this lesson, let's highlight some of the important properties of a chemical change. In a chemical change, the particles rearrange and combine in new ways. The energy changes that take place during a chemical reaction are much greater than those that take place during a physical change in matter. During a chemical reaction, energy is needed to break bonds and then energy is released when the new product is formed. In terms of reversibility, chemical changes are far more difficult to reverse than physical changes. During a chemical change, mass is conserved but the number of molecules may change. Next time, we will explore what we mean when we say the number of molecules may change but the number of atoms stays the same. You can identify chemical changes in the task video on comparing physical and chemical change and visit the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Join us next time. Until then, goodbye.